is Allison, and today I'm going to be doing my review of the 104 slash 12. I realized that I just was really busy and I was also really sick whenever this episode aired about two weeks ago, so I didn't really have the time, nor did I feel well enough to film it. So better late than never, today I'm going to be doing my the 104 slash 12 review. And if you want to watch some of my other reviews, I um, obviously they'll be down in my trailer, down, down in my trailer, down in my channel for you to watch. I pretty much do a review slash reaction to some of my favorite scenes for every episode, so let's get started. So basically we see Octavia and Indra, you know, at the end of 411, Bellamy opens the door, and then all of the other clans, um, a hundred from each clan, are basically meeting Octavia in the whole, like, um, in like the temple space. And so Octavia basically is now like the de facto grounder leader, which I have a big problem with because I feel like she is just not, she doesn't have any, one, she has like no leadership experience, two, like she's supposed to be this big symbol and just takes the place of a POC, which is a huge problem. Like I feel like the leader really should have been Indra because she knows about the grounder culture. She grew up in the grounder culture and she's a POC, which would have been amazing for representation purposes. And also, I just feel like Octavia, sadly, the way her character is written, she perpetuates the white savior stereotype of how we need this white savior to come save us and lead us. And that's not what people of color need. They are warriors themselves and they can save themselves. So I just feel like that's my problem with the storyline, but basically what happens is that they go down, um, Hunter from each clan, so Echo's there, and Octavia was there when Echo got banished, which of course, you know, from the, from Asgata, like, people from her crew, like, don't know that. So she goes up, like, oh, it's gonna be great, and then, like, Octavia's like, um, everyone but you gets to come into the bunker, which I feel like was great because, like, um, Echo is just very, like, Sneaky, and she was banished by Rowan. Rip Rowan, I can't. I really don't think he's dead, though, guys. I feel like that was a massive fake out. I don't think he's dead. Um, and so, I mean, I'm kind of glad that Octavia, like, you know, honored Rowan's memory and just made sure that, like, if you just lied about it and cheated about it, then, like, you don't deserve to be in the bunker. So, basically, we go down. Then the next big part that I really enjoyed was the whole arc, not the arc, the Arcadians, the people from the sky are all in this bunker and it's like oh my gosh like they're already all down there like 500 of them like what are they supposed to do like how can they choose 100 people so then goes into the whole lottery situation which is so heartbreaking you guys and we have like papa miller like putting his name putting his son's name twice which was like i can't i just love their relationship and i love i just love it it's just such a wonderful relationship that i wish we could get to see more of then we have the whole Jackson thing. I actually kind of like that ship, Miller and Jackson. I think that's a great ship. And I just like it. I think it's great. And so basically we have them, you know, trying to, you know, survive the whole lottery thing. And then we have like another crew that's like trying to like, no, like we should like fight against the grounders and like not pick only a hundred of us. And then, you know, like all this stuff. And Octavia says like, you have 12 hours to pick or like, we're just going to kill everyone, which I'm like, Okay, like, another problem. I feel like, I understand, like, Octavia feel Octavia, Octavia feels like she doesn't have a people because she was never accepted with the Sky Crew people, but she was also, like, she was welcomed, like, she found a place with the Grounders because of Lincoln, and now that Lincoln's gone, it's like, but then I still find my place there because she has Indra, who's kind of been, like, her mentor, so... I don't know. So basically we have that whole scenario and I'm just like, Jaha is just like, for me, like, you know, like he's like, oh, well we gotta like incite revolution. And I'm like, you're an idiot. Like the grounders have all the guns. Like you have no weapons. And I feel like that was such a huge moment when like, when like Indra is like passing out the guns to, to the grounders. That's a huge moment because like part of the grounder lore is that they don't touch guns because they believe that if you do that, if you touch a gun, then you have to kill your brother, like kill your best friend. And it was just huge just to see Indra like embrace that and be like, you know what, like we're going to move past this and we got to do what we got to do. And I don't agree with it, but I understand why she felt that way. 
Uh, and then we have the whole, like, Nyla situation where they basically, like, try to throw out Nyla because she's a grounder but is there because of Clark. And then Octavia is just, like, she is just ruthless and is, like, okay, well, not, like, Nyla's with me now. Now you have one less spot to fill. And it was just ruthless, but, I mean, it made sense. I can understand why they would be upset. Like, here's a grounder, like, taking one of our spots, like, our spots. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I still feel like the whole Octavia leadership... Just the whole writing of that is just laughable, but it's just what 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 we've been given. Um, so then we go to the whole like crew going to save Raven. I'm so glad you guys are Raven is alive. They go to save her. I thought it was hilarious how they were like like Bellamy and Clark and friends. They were like in like in the rover, and Bellamy and Clark were flirting, and they crashed into a tree. Like. Oh my goodness, like keep your eyes on the road. But it was kind of cute though, how they were like flirting. And I was like, I can't, you guys, this is my ship. I'm gonna go down with this ship, you guys. Um, so then they basically ready went for help to Monty and Harper who are leaving. Um, you know, the whole like Arcadia thing after everyone's been poisoned and uh, basically committed suicide, which was super dark, but this is the 100 and it's a dark show. Um, and then they have people trying to like fight them and trying to fight them for for their suits. And I'm like, oh my goodness, like this is like a problem. Like how are they gonna defeat? They're obviously like outnumbered and they're outmatched. And then lo and behold, in comes Riding Echo, which I knew she wasn't gonna be dead. Like she's too, too important to the storyline. And I do want to know more about her. I love Tazia. Tazia is so nice and so sweet and. I hate Echo, but I love the actress Tazia. Just kind of how, like, I hate Octavia, but I love Marie. Just, like, kills at every scene. So then in comes writing Echo to, like, save them, which I feel like was a big, it was a good twist to add. And then she's basically like, hey, like, I've saved your life. Now what are you going to do for me? And so basically they give the extra suit to Echo so she can survive. She's obviously suffering from radiation burns because of the whole um, nuclear apocalypse that's basically happening. And so basically they, you know, talk about like, hey, like, is she worth, you know, like her life? Then we have like a Maury like coughing up blood and coughing up black stuff because she's been exposed to radiation and there's a tear in her suit. So basically Clark, being the sacrificial leader, takes off her suit and Bellamy's like, what are you doing? Like, I can't lose you. And I was like, I can't. And then she was like, I have night blood, which I feel like was the first actually confirmation that Bellamy knew about that because Bellamy didn't know that previously like it may not have been mentioned but it was canon in the script for for 412 that like she says like I have night blood and like I'm gonna help out Amori which was great because I love Amori and I want to know like more about her and so they basically change out suits and Bellamy is like you have untested night blood like that's not safe and she was like I gotta do what I gotta do to save a friend um so then they go and they get to Raven and it's like snowing or whatever. I really like that scene. I thought it was great how they all showed up just to save their friend. Because Raven is their friend and I'm glad they showed up to save her. And then we see Clark like throwing up black blood. And she's freaking out because she's like, it's not working. Like, And I feel like it's just a callback to earlier in the season when Luna gets sick from um, radiation poisoning. And she throws up black blood and then eventually her night blood fights off the radiation poisoning which we eventually see that Clark's body does fight that off but um it was just kind of it was just sad to see Clark in that vulnerable position but I'm I am glad that they went to save Raven then we have the whole really interesting conversation back in the bunker with um Kane and Jaha and he's like hey like tell me a way out of this like Kane's trying to convince Jaha like this is not the way and like we have to do what's right for our people and like sometimes it's not always easy decision but like we have to do what's right and so basically, which was really mind blowing, I was like, oh my gosh. They basically gas everyone, knock everyone else out, and basically Kane and um, Draha go back to Clark's list, which I feel like they should have used from the beginning because the list makes sense. It's the most important people, but also just kind of comes up to the question like, is my life more valuable than someone else's life? Like, that's just like, it's crazy and it's ruthless, but in the situation, it makes sense. Basically, they go back to Clark's list, and we see the whole scene of the little boy who gets, who gets saved um, away from his, like, re rebellious father trying to, like, lead, lead a revolt against the Grounders, which was sad. But apparently, we got confirmed that he is back because in five, so he's not dead. Um, yeah, he actually got confirmed for next season, which is great. Um, was like, I feel like he's too, I feel like 
some of this, I want to see more about him and more about his scene and how he's going to cope with out his son. It's going to be really interesting. Um, yeah, and so, like, then we have this scene with Cain and Abby, and Abby, and Cain finds out that Abby is sick, just like Raven is sick, and she is basically going to die soon, and Cain's like, I'm not going to let that happen, like, you're my everything, and Abby's like, you know what, like, I need to be on the other side of that door, like, please don't save me, like, I have to go find my daughter, Clark, and Cain's like, I can't do that, and Cain basically, it was just such a heart-wrenching moment when, like, all the grounders walk in and see everyone gasp, and... One of them tries to take Abby outside, and Cain's like, no, like, not her, not her, not her. It just shows how much he cares for Abby and how he wants to be there for her and support her, which is such an amazing character evolution from season one where he is, like, such a douchebag and, like, thinks he's, like, this great leader. And then just throughout the season, season four, he comes to care, you know, care about other people and is there for Abby. And it's kind of like the, uh, kind of like a sounding board off for her. Um... It was also sad just to see, like, Papa Miller, like, not be on that list, which is just sad because I feel like, you know, that was, like, all that Miller had for his family, basically. And now he has Jackson, which I'm super excited to see more Maxon, which is the ship name. I love how they incorporated their little sign, the little, like, wolf, wolf sign thing. I think that's great. It's actually a funny story is that um, Jared and Statue who play Miller and... Jackson, they basically just came up with this sign and it kind of come it came into the script, which was really cool. Um, they actually shipped that, which was kind of great. And so I love how that was like in the show. Basically, we see like Octavia is like you could see that she's hesitating. Like she's going up to try to basically say, like, time's up, and if you haven't decided, I'm just gonna kill everyone, which I feel like is not a good battle plan. But again, Octavia is inexperienced, doesn't know what she's doing. And it was just a great moment just by Marie just to show her vulnerability of like, you could see Octavia like hesitating. Like, I can't believe I'm about to go kill my own people. Um, and, or, well, even though she doesn't like um, assimilate with them, she still, I mean, she still realizes like, I was still born on the Ark and they're still, they're, they are still technically, I'm a part of their group, even if it's by race. Um, that was really interesting. And it was just such a somber moment, but also a really powerful moment. Um, then we basically see them rescuing Raven, which was great. I was like, yes! Her friends came to rescue her, which was great, you guys. So this season, this episode just, like, blew my mind, you guys. Like, with the whole lottery situation and the whole Bill Mean Clark and friends going to rescue her. And then Echo's involvement with that. Um, it's just going to be interesting, guys. Octavia's rise as a leader, which... I don't believe, and it's laughable, but it is a writing problem for me. But it was so interesting to see Indra be there for her and be like, you know, like, I'm, I'm here for you, and I care about you, and I'm going to be here for you. So, it was a great episode. You guys, let me know what you think down in the comments down below. Let me know what, what were your favorite parts. Um, again, thanks so much for watching, guys, and I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.